Hey guys, the last time you left us, we were in exactly the same position. We had just spent over $5,000 on this brand new uh, a candy electric car, the cheapest car, well, cheapest new car in, electric, in America. And um, trying to drive it home, we figured out that uh, it was just too slow with a top speed of 35 miles an hour. Uh, that is, until it completely died and left us stranded. Uh, so now, whoa, sorry. Now we're uh, towing it back to the office and Tommy's idea is that we may have a, a bad battery management system that thinks that this car has 57% battery when it has no battery. We've got all kinds of trouble lights on, we've got the battery light on, we've got uh, the, the engine, uh, well, basically the equivalent of the check engine light right there for an EV. Uh, and so, um, you know, the plan is uh, to plug it in uh, on the uh, level 2 charger at the office and see if that fixes it. Uh, because unfortunately there are no uh, candy dealers uh, as far as I know that, that uh, you can take this to and fix it um, and unfortunately also because of the way we bought it at the auction we may not be able to return it even though at this point we, we might have uh, the world's most expensive electric paperweight but uh, the good news is um, well there's no good news is there good news Tommy? Yeah, we got the coolest little car that no one else has yeah, my, my plan is to take it to the ranch and just uh, um, get a whole bunch of uh, different guns and shoot it. See how long it takes for it to start on fire and burn down to the ground. Terrible plan, man. I like that plan. I don't know about that. Uh, anyway, let's uh, roll a little bit of video of how we bought this uh, uh, so you guys can see kind of how we got ourselves into this predicament. This? Yes. This is what you bought? I bought this. I bought the candy. K27. Why is it? What does a 27 mean? I, I don't know, Tommy. I don't know if I bought, you know, an expensive go-kart or the coolest, cheapest electric new car in the world. It's got airbags. Yeah, it it's does. It's a safe vehicle. You know, if this thing did 60, and as long as you signed the waiver saying I wouldn't care if I died in an accident with a V, this would be a really popular car. I think 35 is fast when you're on a bicycle. It does sound quick fast, but when you're on a 45 on our road, I don't even know how many people are behind us. It's got to be millions. We got some kind of warning light here. Oh, gee. Not good news there, Dan. No. Oh, no, it's it's dead. Is it? Yep. We lost power? It's not moving. Okay, pull over here. Nothing? Nothing. It's blinking. It's broken down. Brand new strap, brand new car. It's a good day, huh? It's not a good day. It's, a bad, it's one of the worst days of the week. I'd say it's one of the worst days of the year. We just took $5,000 and went boom, 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 right in the fireplace. Actually, after auction fees, more like $5,600. On the plus side, though. Yeah. Here's the plus side. What's that? We got a temporary tag so we can drive it around on the road. <laughs> you think we're helping Candy or hurting them with their uh, expansion plans in America? What is really helping them? Hey, Candy, if we get this running, uh, help us jailbreak it and we'll uh, we'll prove to you that you actually build a car that is sellable and drivable. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Get ready to push it out in case it starts on fire. Here we go. We're plugged in. 15.8. Wow. Did it say 15.8 on the car? This is 8. Right, so our charger tells us how many kilowatt hours we've put in the car and if the battery management system is messed up, in other words, if it doesn't know exactly how much power is in the battery, which is possible, then if this goes all the way up to 17, right now we're at 0.26, then we know that's the issue. So basically even the car said we had 50% battery, we were at zero, uh, and we'll know that because this will go all the way up to 17 kilowatt hours. All right, well let's load a charge and then uh, get some lunch since we have that lunch and then we'll come back. Uh, and we'll see, you know, so we'll see if it's running again. Cool. Okay, cool. So, we just got back from lunch. Uh, the car soaked up 2.3 kilowatt hours of electricity. Tom's putting the, uh, Tommy's putting the safety vest on. It can never be too safe in the Candy K27. It's like a motorcycle, but worse in every way. Does it fit you? No. Oh, okay. The good news is it hasn't caught on fire yet. The only car where you gotta keep the tow hook handy at all times. That's what that cubby's for, actually convenient. It reads 71%. That's not right. 
So I think the computer is just completely wrong. This two kilowatt hours should not be 20%, unless the battery shot, but even then I still would be pretty surprised. Good luck. Call me if you get stuck. Your turn. <laughs> Parking break. Okay. Uh, can you bring me back uh, a couple golf balls, maybe some teas, uh, and um, you know, something to drink. Thanks. He made a golf cart joke. Very clever. All right. Let's see if the candy is fixed. Out on its second voyage. Hold on, Cole. Oh, look at that. The performance has returned. The handling is as lopsided as ever. I think we figured out the issue. It's just out of battery. Now the question is, is the computer completely wrong or is the battery shot? You know, one of the two things. But we're gonna pull it in, put it back on the charger, get some more juice in the candy. Look at the power! Look at the power! Back up and running. The mighty candy back in business. Do we leave it here to charge up for the night or do we just leave it unplugged? I say we leave it unplugged. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Alright, we'll plug it in tomorrow morning. Should we leave it outside? We'll leave it outside. Okay. Hey Tommy, here's another piece of safety equipment. We should probably uh That would do nothing! What do you mean? The lithium batteries make their own oxygen. Well, we, do we know it's a lithium battery? No. <laughs> Look at, look at this, look at the key of entry. Well, let's just, let's just keep the fire candy over here. Wow, I love this thing, what a machine. So, we charged the candy up overnight, and the good news is that number, 14.28, that means that the car took 14.28 kilowatt hours of energy plus another two and a half, which we put into it yesterday. So hopefully, really what's going on with this car is that the battery management system, the BMS, doesn't know when the battery is full or when it's empty. So when it left us stranded on the road, basically the battery was completely dead, but the car didn't know the battery was completely dead, so we thought there was a problem with the car, when in fact it was just a problem with the car not knowing the state of the battery. Still have that light. I don't know what that one means. Oh, just went out. Whatever it means, <laughs> it just fixed itself. I love cars that fix themselves. You know, this candy may not be such a pile of, um, you know what, uh, and we may not be taking it to the ranch to see how it does with, uh, you know, high speed weaponry. Hey Alex, I know how much you love uh, small cars. You do have that Suzuki. Yeah, I love slow small cars. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex owns a Japanese K car. What's it called? The Suzuki it's a Suzuki Every. Yeah, so it's a little tiny van. Maybe you could actually show them at the end of this video. So I thought uh, you could be the first TFL staffer outside of me and Tommy to drive the uh, K27. Love to get your impressions. This, uh, as of now, has 27.7 miles on it. And this is like the dirtiest new car I've ever been in. It just, the outside has this like layer of black film on it. The dashboard looks like it's sun faded and yeah, just, not impressed with uh, this brand new car so far, but I'll take it out on the road. See what this is like. Pull out on the main road and mat it. That's full throttle. And then, you, yeah, you get up to 35 and you can feel it just fall off a wall there because this has a governor. And we're gonna try and get rid of that governor. I'm determined to get rid of the speed limiter on this. That's funny. Not exciting at all, but I gotta say I'm actually a little bit impressed. I didn't think anything was gonna impress me with this car, but I gotta say there's a bigger difference between the standard drive mode and sport mode in this than most new cars I drive, so. There's one good thing, but still, I'm pulling back into the office because I don't want anyone I know to see me in this. You want to park it next to your little Suzuki? Don't touch my car like that. <laughs> You're going to scratch it. You like this thing? No. <laughs> no the good news is that uh, 
the Candy K27 makes your van look big. It does. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Look at that, yeah. It makes it look actually like, you know, like it's a real van as opposed to a toy van. Uh-huh. Brendan's smart car does that too. So we just got to keep buying small vehicles and then I'll feel normal. All right. Well, you know, our next uh, goal out there is to get this thing actually uh, jailbroken, right? Because it's just too slow. It's way too it's slow. It's way too slow, yeah. Big guy in a little, a little car. car. <laughs> Big guy, eh? Windows work. Wait, the power windows? Yeah. Of course. This is candy. Oh, candy. You know, when you name something candy, it's, it's good. Yes. Uh, Wait, is this a bench seat? Uh oh, Tommy, it's not sitting ready. It's in drive. I'm in drive. Oh, what is oh, happening? Uh-oh, we may be dead again. We'll be dead again. So Nathan and Andre were gonna take the candy for a ride, but it's not actually moving. It's got a little warning light and it's not going into any gear. It just flashes warning. So it's broken down again. Um, and this time we don't have a fix. So we're gonna put it out in the sun. I think the issue is my dad took it to a car wash and it got wet. So we're gonna try to put it in some rice, let it, let it dry out, and then we'll try it again. Okay. Put it on the rice? Yeah, you have any rice, Andre? You're moving too fast. I'm fine. This is the fastest it's ever been, Andre. This is as fast as it gets. We'll put it by the trash can, or maybe we'll just put it in the trash can. There you go. Should I park it behind the Toyota? Sure. The problem is then we wouldn't be able to push it again. I guess we could just move we'll push the Toyota, it down because that one won't move. I'm just going to stop right here. If we're lucky, it'll roll in the traffic and get hit by a truck, oh, no, and then... UPS. Oh, oh, God. Maybe we could convince <laughs> UPS to hit it. That would be good. That would fix our problem. Take it off the road! This has to be the least reliable new vehicle you could possibly get. You, you've done it. You finally found a vehicle less reliable than a Land Rover. It's got 20, yeah, funny. My yeah. Land Rover works great. This thing's got 25 <laughs> miles on it. It's broken down twice now. Yeah. Oh, God. While we're waiting for the candy to dry out, Let's take a look at this company because it's a really interesting story and just from a brief amount of research, I've discovered some very fascinating things about candy. Now, in 2020, there was a plethora of articles that came out about the K27. This is one from Green Car Reports. Candy claims 7,999 effective cost in California for 59 mile electric car, K27 cleared for road use. Here's one from CNN where they discussed the candy. Another one from Electric. Um, so this company got a ton of publicity. Um, there's even a, a, a drive here on Inside EVs where they drove the candy. Um, and all of these reviews are, are basically, you know, November of 2020, all of these news articles. And since then, I've heard pretty much nothing about candy from any news article. So that got me thinking, like, what happened to this little company? Well, it turns out candy is a publicly traded company. Um, and then at the end of November 2020, Hindenburg Research, which is, just, which is this large research um, firm, went ahead and published their findings on what they discovered when they investigated candy. Candy, how this China-based NASDAQ listed company used fake sales EV hype to nab 160 million from US investors. And this was published at the end of November of 2020. And let's see some of their findings. Today we reveal what we believe to be a brazen scheme by China-based NASDAQ listed candy technologies group to falsify revenue using fake sales to undisclosed affiliates. Let me refresh this page here. So there's a lot of really interesting findings here. Candy raised $160 million from US investors this month alone. All told, we think candy has engaged in major fake revenue scheme, hyping its story to US investors in order to take advantage of regulatory gaps. Um, but this is a really large article. I definitely recommend you read it. And I'm not claiming that this is what candy did. This was based on the Hindenburg Research Company, but check this out. Um, the company's largest customer, representing about 55% of the last 12 months sales, shares a phone number with a candy subsidiary a shared, and shared an executive with candy. Um, they, they quote, visited this company customer. It is based in a tiny building right next to Candy's factory with a sign indicating that it's a candy company. The same building housed another entity used by Candy as part of a separate fake sales scheme to collect illegitimate subsidies from the Chinese government for which it was fined and sanctioned. 
So pretty bold claims here and pretty, uh, pretty explosive research that Hindenburg found and really lots and lots of research. But a couple of interesting things I want to point out, which I think is very fascinating. So this is uh, 2016. The Chinese government announced that Candy had been involved in a scheme through its joint venture to obtain illegitimate EV subsidies through the use of sham sales to related parties. Now check this out. In 2019, media stumbled across a car lot where thousands of candy cars were apparently sitting unused and had been deteriorating for years, believed to be part of the scheme. Wow. So basically this scheme, at least Hindenburg claims, this scheme works because candy cars were so cheap, the cost to build the vehicles was less than the subsidies. So candy just needed to build as many cheap cars as possible to cash in on the government money. Very interesting. Now, what else is interesting is that well prior to 2020, Candy has had um, a rather checkered past with sales here in the US. And this just keeps going and going. Here we go. This is in part three. Candy has been, quote, launching in the US for 12 years. We expect its efforts will continue to sputter. So Candy, quote, launched in the US in 2008. Its first batch of cars were seized by US Customs after being imported illegally. The launch failed. Um, the company eventually sorted out the problem. And in 2008, a smattering of US dealerships attempted to sell the car. There it was back in 2008. Now this is where things get very interesting. We asked Candy's 2008 US distribution, distribution partner about the vehicles. They quote, didn't run. Every single one broke. Here's um, uh, the, um, um, the founding partner of Candy's US importer. We brought in our first 200 vehicles and had nothing but problems. They didn't run. Every single one broke. The prototype was excellent, but when they started shipping, these vehicles were nothing but problems. Okay, kind of alarming here. Um, every single one, I'm a salesman and I was running around the country like a mechanic. I was flying all around to fix these things and it just got the point. I can't do this anymore. I left because the whole process was horrible. Um, too secretive. A lot of side deals I don't know about. I said, you guys handle it. I'm out. Oh boy. Not great. So a very checkered past here in the U.S. And this just goes on and on and on. Um, and definitely worth a read on this Hindenburg research. Uh, about candy, but um, kind of worried about parking it inside now. Kind of curious if maybe letting it sit in the sun has caused it to start up again. Uh, but very interesting. Candy has got definitely a checkered past. Okay, uh, where's Nathan? Uh, he screamed out and left. He just he gave up on it. He's abandoned the candy. Yes. So I really do think that my dad got this car wet and we just had to let it dry out in the sun. So it's been some time. Fingers crossed we can get it to move. Okay, ready? Ready. Pushing the button. <clears throat> okay. Oh, Andre! What? It says ready! No, I don't believe it. Andre, So I, it just needs to dry out. I think, no, hang on, you're driving okay. this thing. I don't want to drive this again. Oh okay, yeah. I would love to drive it. Okay, here I'll switch with you. You can slide over on the bench. Oh yes. This is a wonderful bench seat. And it's a uh, floor mat by WeatherTech. I didn't know WeatherTech made seat, uh, floor mats for this. You know what's funny? I don't know what car these WeatherTechs came out of. I think they came out of a Porsche. And they fit perfectly. So this is basically a 911. This is maybe a 910. Oh. It's missing, missing a, missing, missing a some numbers. Couple power. So I noticed we have front disc brakes. Oh yeah. Rear drums. Yep. Uh, what kind of suspension do we have? Like Bill Stein or something? It has suspension. <laughs> I don't know what kind. I think we're good to go. Oh my gosh, it's blowing air. It's kind of cold. First drive in the candy, Andre. It's moving, and it's stopping. I think we're good. All right, hold on. Are you starting out in drive or are you going into sport mode? Oh, is there a sport mode? Yeah, put it into sport. You'll see a huge difference. It says 107 miles remaining. That's completely lying. <laughs> nowhere near that. Maybe well, 40. Let me let me do a J turn. No, it's not quite a J turn. Woo! Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? You squealed the front tires. <laughs> Wait, I'm a little scared. This thing is a handling machine, Andre. Oh, I think I'm toughed out. I think you hit the limit of 35. I just lost 20 miles of range. <laughs> <laughs> but we went like half a mile. We went 0.3 of a mile. Yeah. So as long as you don't trust either the range estimate or the battery estimate, 
or maybe even the speed speedometer, it's okay, you're right. At this point, you're probably wondering, well, how well equipped is the Candy K27? And that's where we need a real expert, Doug DeMuro, except he's not around. So I'm going to do my best impersonation and hopefully tell you all the quirks and features you need to know. This is the Candy K27, the most affordable new car in the USA. And in this video, I'm going over all the quirks and features of the K27. Then we're going to get it out on the road and maybe throw it in a trash can. The design of the K27 is as if someone described a Mini Cooper over the phone, and that's what they went with. The key is clearly a knockoff Audi key from about 10 years ago, but it does have one really cool quirk and feature. You've got lock, unlock, and this center button, which allows you to honk the horn three times so you can find the candy in a parking lot. The quality of the candy is a little bit suspect, and the doors are about two inches thick, but at least you have push button lock. On the inside you have leather, vinyl, seating surfaces with contrasting red stitching. And the front is a bench seat that slides forward, back, reclines, and can even be lifted up for shorter drivers. Although if you need to lift this seat up, you're probably so short you probably shouldn't be, be driving whatsoever. The Candy has two airbags, one for the driver and one for the passenger. But judging on this airbag panel fitment, I'd be more scared about that airbag exploding than the actual crash itself. The Candy does come equipped with push button start and it does have a conventional shifter. Reverse, neutral drive and sport. You're probably wondering where is the parking mode? There is no parking cog. Instead, you have to engage the parking brake, which if you're wondering, barely holds the car. Hello. Off center with the smiley face not fully on the panel, USB port, auxiliary port, and climate control. You have a three position fan with heat and AC. You want to change the temperature? Well, too bad. You get heat or you get AC. No temperature choices whatsoever. The Candy does have a touchscreen display with some of the worst glare I've seen on any car, but it's surprisingly useful with radio and Bluetooth connectivity, and there's even a vehicle information page which shows you temperatures of the motor and the controller, that kind of thing. And of course, the backup camera, which is federally mandated, and one fantastic feature of the backup camera, if you have the radio up and you're jamming along, if you put it in reverse, it shuts off the radio so you can see better. The gauges in the Candy are surprisingly nice, a tachometer and a speedometer. The tachometer in an electric car is kind of weird, and yes, it does show RPMs, allegedly. The speedometer is actually also kind of weird because it goes red at 60 miles an hour, which is supposed to be the top speed, except this one is limited to 35. So you pay for the full speedometer, but you certainly don't use it. The back seat of the Candy is genuinely incredible. Considering this was supposed to be a $12,000 car or under $8,000 after tax credit, this is an amazing rear seat. Check out some of the quirks and features. First of all, you do have real headrests that rise from the base of the cushion. You also have really incredible legroom. I'm six feet tall, plenty of space with map pockets and even a little hook here to hang some groceries. The best part though is the headroom, not bad for such a tiny car, and the seats not only slide forward and backward, they also recline like a Rolls Royce. The trunk of the Candy is quite small, but it does have some interesting quirks and features, starting with the charger. And if you ever wonder what the origin of this car is, the script on the charger may give you a hint. It's your standard 110 volt wall outlet. You also get a safety vest, which we have used several times already. And under here, you're even gonna find a little warning triangle. And check it out, the seats do fold flat. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my Doug homage. And guys, I hope you are enjoying this candy series because this car is genuinely horrible. It's just terrible. But let us know what you want to see done in the comments section below so long as the car stays running. Um, and as always, this has been Tommy and the whole team. We'll see you on another candy episode. See what else breaks. It's going to be a lot. The candy also has backup beepers. And let's see if they work. So I'm backing up to a wall. It's beeping. Huh. I would say that they actually work extremely well. Look at that. Huh. I'll be damned. Good work, Candy.